Hello, you. Welcome to your story time. Miss Debbie stories just for you. And for Foxy Loxy, because he's joining us tonight. Hi, Foxy Loxy. Hi. <laughs> All right. Are you going to help me sing? That's good. Ready? Hello, everybody. How are you? How are you? How are you? Hello, everybody. How are you? How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Foxy says he's good too. So, <laughs> um, then we have our, our very special song about mommies and going off and being quite independent individuals, going on play dates or school all by ourselves and act, acting like grown-ups, but we still need our mommy. Sometimes my mommy takes me over to my friend's house to play. Sometimes she's gone a little while and sometimes she's gone all day. But my mommy comes back, my mommy comes back, my mommy comes back to get me. My mommy comes back, she always comes back, she never would forget me. No, 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 no. Thank you, Foxy Loxy. Loved, I love this little fox. One day we'll read a book called What Does the Fox Say? Um, but that's a very long explanation of what a fox says. Let's work on our manners, how do you do's, and and replies very well, I thank you, and also a little finger exercises in that. So make your fists, put them in your lap. Where is Thumpkin? Where is Thumpkin? Here I am. Here I am. How are you today, sir? Very well, I thank you. Run away, run away. Where is Pointer? Where is Pointer? Here I am. Here I am. How are you today, sir? Very well, I thank you. Run away. Run away. Where is Tall Lady? Where is Tall Lady? Here I am. Here I am. How are you today, ma'am? Very well, I thank you. Stride away stride away. Where is ring man? Where is ring man? Here I am. Here I am. How are you today, sir? Very well, I thank you. Run away. Run away. Where is pinky? Where is pinky? Here I am. Here I am. How are you today, dude? Very well, I thank you. You skip away, skip away. All right. Feels good to rub your, your hands and your fingers out right now. So um, let's talk about our fingers a little bit. Um, pointer. Pointer is used for pointing. You can say, I want that. Or point to yourself or point to someone else. So pointer, finger, pointer is very very well named. Um, this one I call Tall Lady. Um, in some songs it's called Tall Man, but it's good for scratching a nose. But Tall Lady, I think of a princess um, in the deep jungles of Africa who strides. She walks very regally with her head high. She strides. She doesn't run. Ring Man Ring, this is typically a ring finger. In the olden days, everyone wore rings on the finger, especially on the left hand. It, if you put a ring and you look at uh, mommy or daddy's finger and you might see a gold band or a wedding ring on ring man. And in the old days, people believed that that finger had the blood vessel that went way up the arm and right to the heart. So that's why they, when they got married, they put a gold ring on that finger, and hence it's called Ring Man. 
and pinky you can make a pinky promise with your friend with your pinkies pinkies are just cute not to forget the thumb we're very lucky to be human beings who have hands with what they're called thumbs and they help us to grab things um, gorillas and baboons and monkeys also have thumbs but other animals know they have paws they and tr just try to grab something without your thumb you, uh, you, I don't really want to grab my water without my thumb but with my thumb I can put put it around so that's your little lesson today Let's get right into our stories. I have some brand new books that I'm just itching to read. This is called The Boy with Flowers in His Hair by Jarvis. I just absolutely love this book. A simple story with simply beautiful pictures. Um, look at this. I'll bet you could draw a beautiful flower like that with some bees. By the way, you could do, if you're painting, you could dip your fingertip or your thumb tip into the paint and paste it on the paper and put a few wings on it and call it a bee. This is um, written by Jarvis. I don't know who Jarvis is, but I sure like this book. It's published by Candlewick press and I have to say it again one of my favorite publishers of children's books his name is David he's the boy with flowers in his hair and he's my best friend everybody likes David even Mrs. Jones and flowers make her sneeze David's sweet and gentle, just like the petals of his flowers. We have the best time together, finding good puddles to jump in, making up songs, and running away from the bees. Once, he had a family of birds living in his hair for a whole month. It was really funny. But one day something happened. I was watering David's hair and one of his petals came off in my hand. He's got a little rain cape on while his friend waters his petals. That afternoon, David didn't want to play. And you could see he's lost petals everywhere he walks. The next day, David started wearing a hat. David never wore hats. He was quiet. David was never quiet. Mrs. Jones asked us to take off our coats and hats and scarves. When David took off his, Petals fluttered down like butterflies. David was twiggy, spiky, and brittle, like dead sticks. Everyone stayed away in case they got hurt by his branches. I got a few scratches, but it wasn't David's fault. Then I had an idea. I asked Mrs. Jones for a paintbrush and some scissors, and I found a way. I made colorful leaves and flowers to give David his color back, and I stuck them on the twigs on his head. I made new flowers for David all the time, Everybody wanted to help. David seemed back to how he was before, almost. Then one day I noticed a different flower in David's hair. It wasn't one of mine. 
It wasn't one of anyone's. It was David's. It was a real flower, a new flower, prettier than ever. And here comes the bee to prove it's a new flower. More and more of David's own flowers started to bloom, and soon enough, all those buzzy bees were back. So right now, David has lots and lots of flowers in his hair. But I'm making sure I still have lots of paper ones, just in case he ever needs them. The end. Because he's my best friend. And I am his. That's the end. Isn't that the best book? Love this book. Just, just, this book makes you just feel good. Oh, should we get ready for bed? Sure. This is the way we wash our face, wash our face, wash our face. This is the way we wash our face before we go to bed. This is the way we comb our hair, comb our hair comb our hair. This is the way we comb our hair before we go to bed. This is the way we brush our teeth, brush our teeth, brush our teeth. This is the way we brush our teeth, very important, before we go to bed. This is the way we blow a kiss, blow a kiss, blow a kiss. This is the way we blow a kiss before we go to bed. Ah. I'm in the getting ready for bed mood, but I have more stories to share. Fraser, the Forest Ranger. You can see this is a new book in our library. I couldn't wait for this book to come in. Written by Matthew Schuffman and illustrated by Mr. Schuffman as well. <clears throat> This is published by Random House Studio. Do you know what a forest ranger does? He kind of um, climbs up a tower to look for fires across the forest. Uh, you can see there, there's mountains in the distance. Um, it's a pretty important job. I, I don't know if Fire rangers still go up in towers, or they can just use drones or cameras to, to look out for fires. But if you go hiking, um, you, you will find old fire towers to, um, to you can even climb up some of them and, and, uh, and see the view. But in the old days, it was very important that was the only way to spot fires. Fraser loved the forest. He watched over it from his cabin on the top of Pine Peak. There's his cabin and his fire tower is right on top of it. Each morning he would walk down from his hill and check on the trees and the animals. Aren't these the best pictures? I love the color, all the greens. There's deer in the background and bear and flowers and ferns and trees. Each night, he would walk back up, make a large stack of pancakes for dinner and rest by the fire. Looks like a cozy life. Although Fraser loved being a ranger, he did everything alone. He played games alone, like checkers. He paddled alone in his canoe. He danced alone. He even celebrated his birthday alone. Being alone all the time was okay. But Fraser thought it might be nice to meet someone new. So the next morning, Fraser set out to see if he could find a friend. He's going down the road. After walking for some time, 
Fraser came upon a large lake. Crowds of people were lying on the beach. People were playing volleyball and boats bobbed on the water. He's overlooking the beach and the boats. The hot sun beat down on Fraser. I miss the cool shade of the trees. This isn't a place for me, he thought. Fraser kept walking and found a busy zoo. So there's the zoo and parking lot with all the cars. People bustled around at the zoo with hot dogs and balloons. Although the people were smiling, Fraser couldn't help but notice that all the animals looked sad. The lion, the frog, the monkey, the bear. There's the hot dog man. I miss my animal friends, thought Fraser. He decided to keep searching. Fraser walked for miles and miles and eventually came upon a large city. Look how gray and dirty the city looks compared to the beautiful green forest. I must be very far from home. There are a lot of people in cities. I'm sure I'll be able to find a friend there. Fraser stood on a very busy street for hours and greeted everyone who passed by. Some people brushed past him, some listened to music, some talked on phones. No one stopped to talk. Fraser sat on a city bench, defeated and a little sad. The lights in the buildings were so bright he couldn't see any stars as he could back home. I miss the trees and the stars, thought Fraser. It's time for me to go back home to the forest where I belong. So there's all the, the lights from the big buildings. Everything's gray. There's a lot of, there's a puddle, puddles, dirty puddles. There's, um, trash and garbage strewn about, an empty bottle, a banana peel, just scraps of paper, and just not nice. By the time Fraser reached the forest, it was very late. The trails were dark and hard to see, and he only had the light of the small flashlight. Or a torch, they call it in Ireland, a torch, we call it a flashlight. Finally, he climbed the hill to his cabin. Oh, look at the stars, but look how little his light is, his torch. Fraser opened the door and gasped. There was a stranger in his cabin. I'm Fraser, what are you doing in my cabin, he asked. I'm Hazel. What are you doing in my cabin, she replied. This is the Maple Ridge Ranger Station. Are you sure you're in the right place, she asked. Now that he's inside, it doesn't look exactly like his place. I'm so sorry to bother you, said Fraser, as he left the cabin. I must have taken a wrong turn in the dark. I'll be on my way. Wait, said Hazel, why don't you stay for dinner? I just made pancakes. The two new friends stayed up late eating pancakes and sharing stories about the forest. Fraser loved the forest and his favorite part was having a friend close by. So he lives on Pine Hill and she lives on Maple Ridge Hill. That's the way I'd like to live. My little cottage and my best friend's cottage on the next mountain. The end. Love that book. Oh boy, Miss Debbie loves stories. Couldn't you guess? 
I have two more to go, but we'll do some songs first, okay? I've been eager to share this song. I sang it last week, um, Hickory Dickory Dock, because it is a really a bedtime counting song. It's the story of a little mouse that he's got a lot of energy at night. And what does he do in his boredom? He likes to climb up the clock. So here's kind of a picture of a grandfather clock. Um, it's in a tower. And the little mouse, he's going to climb up the clock and uh, do his thing. <laughs> so can you make the um, that tick-tock sound of a clock? Yeah. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Hickory dickory dock. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck one and down he ran. Hickory dickory dock. Hickory dickory dock. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck two. The mouse said boo. Hickory dickory dock. Hickory dickory duck, the mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck three, the mouse said, Wee! Hickory dickory duck. Hickory dickory duck, he's getting sleepy. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck four, the mouse said, No more. Hickory dickory duck. Time for your little mouses to go to bed. Good night, little mouse. And it's time for us to get ready to think about bed, right? Day is done, gone the sun, from the land, from the hills, from the sky. All is well, safely rest. Sleep is nigh, sleep is near. And when it's dark, Twinkle comes out to watch over us while we sleep. Starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might have the wish I wish tonight. Make a wish. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Thank you, Twinkle. We'll see you just before we close our eyes. Um, twinkle goes to sleep when the sun comes out. Um, and then the sun watches over us in the daytime. Let's sing Skidamarink, shall we? Skidamarink, a dink, a dink, skidamarink, a do. I love you. Skidamarink, a dink, a dink, skidamarink, a do. I love you. I love you in the morning and in the afternoon. I love you in the evening and underneath the moon. Skid a rink a dink a dink, skid a rink a do. I love you, cha cha cha. And I do. So this is book is called Bigu by Alexis Deacon. Bigu. Bigu looks like a little bunny type of creature like a cuddly toy that you might even have. So Bigu by Alexis Deacon and published by Farrar Strauss and Giro, New York. So you can tell from this picture in the middle of a desert with a starry night sky, a flying saucer or a spaceship crash landed and a little bunny type creature fell out. Bigu was not supposed to be here. She was lost. 
She has three eyes. Imagine what you could see with three eyes. No one seemed to understand her when she spoke, even the little bunny rabbits. She said hello to the, the clouds. Oh, she said hello to the tree, and the tree said, what? I don't get it. <laughs> Some creatures wouldn't even stay still to listen. They just ran away. And here's some leaves she doesn't understand. The leaves don't know how to talk. From far away, she thought she heard her mother calling. There's the leaves going far away, birds in the sky, and the city. But her mother wasn't here. That's a telephone booth, the kind you find in London. <laughs> Bigu didn't like being alone. Look how sad she is. She needed to find some friends. People passing by just ignored her. She did find some friends at last in a box. Puppies in a box. And she cuddled up to sleep with the puppies. Somebody left the box in front of the animal shelter. And the man looked in the box and he said, what on earth is that? But Bigu wasn't wanted there at the animal shelter, even though the puppies wanted her. Aw, poor Bigu, walking the streets. Then she thought she'd found the perfect place. She saw some kids jumping rope. And it was the perfect place. She played jump rope all by herself, twirling the hula hoop in her ears. It was the perfect place. The kids loved her. Uh-oh. Here comes the mean teacher lady. Not everyone thought Bigu belonged there. Oh, mean teacher lady. Oh, poor Bigu. Oh, children, your playmate. Wait, they said, wait. Her friends wanted to say goodbye and hug her goodbye and give her the hula hoop. Goodbye, Bigu. Once again, from far away, she thought she heard her mother calling. Mommy. But she knew it couldn't be. So she laid down under the light of the moon and went to sleep. But could it? What's coming through the sky? What's beaming Bigo, Bigu up into the spaceship? It was. It was Mommy and Mommy coming to get her. Bigu told her parents all about life on Earth, how Earth creatures were mostly big and unfriendly, but there were some small ones who seemed hopeful. Bigu would always Remember the small ones. She hoped they would remember her too. The end. Oh, that book makes me almost want to cry. That's so sweet. Ah! <clears throat> Are you getting sleepy? 
If you're sleepy and you know it, blink your eyes, blink, blink. If you're sleepy and you know it, blink your eyes, blink, blink. If you're sleepy and you know it, you will always show it. If you're sleepy and you know it, blink your eyes, blink, blink. If you're sleepy and you know it, wink one eye. One eye is a wink. If you're sleepy and you know it, wink your eye. Wink, wink. If you're sleepy and you know it, you will always show it. If you're sleepy and you know it, wink your eye. Wink, wink. If you're sleepy and you know it, nod your head. Nod, nod. If you're sleepy and you know it, nod your head. Nod, nod. If you're sleepy and you know it, you will always show it. If you're sleepy and you know it, nod your head, nod, nod. If you're sleepy and you know it, take a deep breath. Ah, in through your nose and out through your mouth. Ah, oh, that's nice. If you're sleepy and you know it, you will always show it. If you're sleepy and you know it, take a deep breath. Ah, oh, that's really nice. Ooh, it's time for Lily White's party. But no, Miss Debbie, let's have more books. You promised us more stories. Mama in the Moon by Doreen Cronin and Brian Cronin. Doreen Cronin is a pretty famous picture book author. Mama in the Moon. And here is the moon. Do you like to look up at the moon? I do. Baby Sloth lived high up in the trees with his mama. We're learning about sloths in this book. Here he is with his mama. Baby loves sleeping between his mama and the moon. Every night they held each other close. Look at the stars. <clears throat> One night, Baby tumbled from the tree. He landed in a soft patch of vines and leaves. Oh boy, there he is. Mama's way up high in the tree. Mama, where are you, he called. I'm right here, baby, Mama answered. I will be there soon. Mama Sloth started down the tree. It was a long journey. Sloths are known to be very quite slow. Baby looked up past the knotty holes, past the canopy of leaves and vines. He was far away from home, far away from Mama. Mama, he called. I can't see you, Mama. Look closer, Baby, said Mama. Look for the moon. Now I see you, Mama. And she's up by the moon. <clears throat> Baby watched as Mama made her way down the front of the moon. Slowly, slowly slid the sloth. Are you close now, Mama? I'm closer, Baby. I'm close enough to smell the flowers opening for the night. Can you smell them too? Did you know some flowers only open for the moon? That's amazing. Baby watched the bright petals of the flowers bend and fold. He could smell their sweet perfume. Mama moved slowly down the tree. Are you close now, Mama? I'm closer, baby. I'm close enough to hear the worms wriggling in the fallen leaves. Can you hear them? 
Can you see them? They must be glowworms. But where's Mama? I hear them, Mama. Baby listened to the worms wriggle around him. Mama is giving him things to do and think about while she takes her time coming down the tree. Mama moves slowly down the tree. Are you close now, Mama? I'm closer, baby. I'm close enough to feel the flutter of moths dancing in the air. Can you feel them too? As we get into the summer months, you, and you stay up later, um, and you're outside, you will notice that moths come out at night, and they like to flutter around light. So light bulbs or light poles or um, whatever light you have on your house, you, you'll find moths fluttering around. Blue moths filled the air. Baby could feel the breeze of their fluttering wings. I'm here, baby. <gasps> look at, look at mommy's, here's mommy's sloth fingernails and her arm. I'm here, baby. Let's go home. So she picked up her baby and there's the moths and the wriggly worms and the flowers and the moon. Are we going back to the moon, Mama? Back to the moon, baby. As they slowly, slowly climb the tree. It'll take a long time to get back up. On average, a sloth will fall out of a tree once a week for its entire life. But don't worry, that's a normal part of how they live. I didn't know that. You'll have to come to the library to read books on real sloths because they're just fascinating. So that was our four books for tonight. Um, so really, it is time to go hippity hop to bed. And you say, I'd rather stay up instead. But when mother says must, there's nothing but just go hippity hop to bed. And I want to remind you that you are my sunshine. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Mwah. Well, good night, Foxy Loxy. Good night, you. And sleep well, and I will see you in your dreams. Mwah.